Welcome to New Zealand. Those of you that have travelled to be here to our own media, um, very warm welcome to you as well. Um, and everyone sitting down the back. Um, you know, this is the first time I've been at Trends. Uh, I have popped in a couple of times in previous years uh, in my previous while with the Rugby World Cup just to, to tell the audiences about uh, what was building up to, to uh, what happened in New Zealand in 2011. But this is the first opportunity I've had to actually be involved in a Trends event from start to finish. Um, I've been in the, the tourism industry now about 10 months. Uh, I wondered after the Rugby World Cup how you could get involved in something um, that would generate anywhere near as much excitement and interest. Uh, and then I found tourism and it's got all the attributes of sport. Um, you have these fantastic highs and uh, we're going to hear this morning a little bit about, I think we're on a bit of a high at the moment. Um, you have your disastrous <coughs> moments. Um, it goes in all sorts of directions. Uh, lots of great people that have got fantastic passion for what they do and uh, really enjoy interacting with each other uh, and it's a pleasure just to be inside inside the business. Um, in this form I think this is uh, the 20th trends. I think the first one was in 1994 that Tourism Industry, Industry Association took responsibility for and every year it's been grown since then. I had a look at uh, back at some of the archives and in 1994 uh, we had 30 exhibitors and we had 30 buyers. Um, and sounded like it was a fantastic success and it's kept growing since. Um, we know this is one of the pivotal moments each year uh, for uh, our tourism industry, our opportunity uh, to show off New Zealand product to all of the buyers that come here from around the world. Um, you know, for my oppor first opportunity um, yesterday and this morning to walk right through the cloud to pop over to Shed 10 and just to be hit in the face by the quality of the New Zealand product, it, it was something special. It made, it made me feel, feel really proud about um, what it is that this industry does. Um, it is really at the heart of, of New Zealand. Um, it's not just there in terms of the economy, even though it makes a, a really significant uh, contribution to New Zealand's economy. But I think it, it provides so much of, of who New Zealanders are and, and the vibrancy and, and the profile uh, for a little country really tucked away um, at the end of the world, uh, it's our opportunity to, to be seen around the world and for people to start to get to know uh, what New Zealand is about and what New Zealanders are about. So that's really exciting um, to be in the middle of this. Um, what we're going to do today uh, is we're going to hear from three very senior uh, CEOs in the tourism industry. For those of you who were here um, half an hour ago and listened to Dr. Pavel Grosvich, uh, you would have heard a lot about New Zealanders should be thinking really hard about what is happening right around the world, a, a generational change uh, that is happening uh, where the centre of gravity for uh, the world economy and including in that tourism is shifting and it's shifting into Asia and Pavel was being incredibly provocative, challenging New Zealand operators, challenging our industry to get used to the fact that we are in uh, a period of very significant uh, change. We are not going to go back to the status quo, we are going to keep moving forward on this change path and the reality is we not only have to get used to that but we have to work out where's our best place to be in this. And uh, what he's saying to us is, why not set the ambition about being ahead of the pack or at the front of the pack instead of being dragged along uh, by the pack? So we're in the middle of a whole lot of uh, industry discussions at the moment, which Pavel is, is provoking. And uh, you know, I think there's some excitement growing about the fact that we actually can do this. So that statistic that of our 2.6 million visitors, 99% arrive uh, in an aircraft it just demonstrates the importance of air connectivity to the success of our industry. Therefore, it follows that our industry is not entitled to stand over here and wish Christopher good luck with what he's doing. Instead, what we have to do is go and hold hands with him um, and make sure uh, that his business succeeds, uh, just as we do with a lot of foreign airlines that provide 
uh, terrific connectivity as well. China Southern, for instance, took that step last year of going to daily services between uh, Auckland and Guangzhou. Uh, the industry needs them to succeed, therefore we cannot stand off to the, so uh, to the side and hope that they do. We actually have to get right next to them and uh, give them a much better chance than if they were left alone. So that's got to be our philosophy. Uh, Pavel this morning in his uh, Auckland Airport uh, speaker series address uh, talked about compellingly about the unstoppable change that is happening uh, right around the world and within our industry in New Zealand. Um, six years ago New Zealand produced a, a, a national tourism plan, uh, 84 pages. When you pick it up and read it, uh, there's, there's a few things that are missing but uh, one of them is a significant presence of Auckland Airport. Uh, six or seven years ago when that plan was being developed, uh, Auckland Airport I think was off to the side of the industry being um, regarded and maybe even regarding itself as simply a, a transport facilitator uh, for the industry. Auckland Airport decided itself to make a significant change to that. Not only was it going to provide uh, fantastic facilities for um, air transportation, uh, but it was going to get it stuck in itself and make a, an even more significant contribution to the success of the industry. So, so from that time on we saw uh, Auckland Airport become active marketers uh, in making sure that uh, more and more visitors were starting to come to New Zealand. Uh, they started to draw retail uh, into their business and connect up retail and tourism in a much more overt way than had been seen ever before. Um, it's been a very successful change by way of a little bit of a wrap up here. Um, some of the conversations you've been hearing this morning, um, you can hear the word we being used a lot and that's what's happening at the moment is that uh, we're at a point of time where the leaders right across um, tourism are talking to each other and listening to each other and doing it um, in a really committed and intensive way. The, um, one of the catalysts for this is, is the various stars are aligning, um, new leadership is, has come into the industry, new strategic uh, uh, courses are being set, existing strategic courses are being refreshed. Um, so there is a whole lot of reason um, for people to be um, talking to each other. Um, more than that, I think people better understand that um, the success of each individual organisation will be um, more likely if next to that organisation is the collective power of the industry itself and so um, the leaders across the sector are determined to create that collective power. We're not just talking about you know four people uh, that are sitting and standing here today telling you our respective stories. We're talking about um, organisations right across the industry, uh, the CEOs right across the industry who are saying uh, we're determined to be part of that collective. Um, we want to hunt as a pack, that's Christopher's saying that he's coined for what we're doing. We are going to do better if, if we hunt as a pack. We are going to do better if we are ambitious. It is not about holding our own, it's not about playing catch up. It's actually about getting to the, to the front of the pack and it's about leading. Um, and so, you know, quite often what you do in these circumstances um, is you have to give yourself a hell of a good talking to and say, shake yourself up. Um, just don't carry on as you've been carrying on because if you do, you're going to get the same results. Why would it change? If you do the same things uh, the same way, why would you expect the results to be any different? Uh, so what we're saying to ourselves now is um, let's recognise that the world is changing really quickly. Let's increase our pace and make sure that we keep up and get to the front of that. So what's happening at the moment, and this National Tourism Plan project is only in its infancy. Um, it's been pretty intensive work over the last few weeks and ideas are starting to emerge and Pavel talked about some of those this morning. Um, but it is going to take us a lot of this year to unpick our way through uh, what it is that we have to do to choose our targets and then to commit to those targets. We're, 
We've chosen Horizon Point 2025. Um, no particular reason other than um, it's, it's uh, I guess it's a, it's a long-term uh, commitment that we're making and we want to uh, challenge ourselves to see what it is that New Zealand's industry can achieve um, in the year 2025. And we want to say, okay, um, what does success in 2025 look like? And work backwards from there. So, you know, this is, this is um, we're setting a course now that, that we expect to take New Zealand through to success in that time. But we also recognise that it's not very easy for a lot of people to, to just sort of take 2025 and um, look at what we're saying about success and actually join the dots back to 2013. So we're sort of taking what we're calling a, a staircase approach to this where we'll explain in the course of this plan how it is that we're going to make our way through a series of steps through to 2025. And for a lot of people, we're just asking them to keep looking at what is the next step they have to take. Don't have to look too far ahead. We'll set the course, just make sure you get to the next step and then make sure you take the step after that and the step after that. And then it's the collectiveness of, of each of those steps that you take. Before you know it, um, things have changed for the better significantly. So um, that's, that's the philosophy behind it. Um, two key pillars that are going to underpin this. Um, one is economic growth. And, and when you listen to these three guys this morning, um, you are hearing them absolutely focused on economic growth, tangible economic growth. This is not warm fuzzies. This is about people um, running businesses successfully, making profit, about people who are prepared to invest in tourism, getting a decent return um, so that they are encouraged to keep investing. And if we keep investing, then the foundation that we're creating gets stronger and stronger and the chances of success um, increase. But coupled with that, and it is really interlinked with that, is the quality of the visitor experience. It's no use us just sitting here trying to make money. Um, the starting point for us in lots of ways has to be the quality of the experience that we provide for the visitors that come to New Zealand. Now there are lots of pockets uh, where visitors receive a fantastic experience when they come to New Zealand. Um, we're saying the whole game has to shift and it has to shift upwards and that, that quality has to keep improving um, steadily and strongly uh, right across the board in a consistent way and there are a whole lot of components to visitor experience. From the moment someone thinks they're sitting in a faraway country, they're thinking we might want to come to New Zealand, everything that happens to them from that point on, through their decision making process, through their initial inquiries, through the way in which it's brought to reality, through to the whole, the, the moment they arrive back uh, at their home, we have to make sure that that is, that is as brilliant as it can be. And what we know is that if we actually achieve that, then that's going to help us enormously with this determination to achieve significant e economic growth. So the two things are very interlocking. So that's a bit of a snapshot of what the thinking is at the moment. Um, and the lovely thing is that, that uh, uh, to be sitting in the middle of this, um, to be watching the thought process that is happening, to be participating in it um, and to be realising that if we all get on the same page and we have that commitment to success, we will succeed and we'll succeed for the betterment of the industry in New Zealand and for the betterment of the people that come and experience New Zealand. So thanks for today.